Hey guys, thanks again. Thanks for checking in. This is Ali Roy with Mills Realty. And I'm here today um, with Peter Streff from Guarantee Rate. As you know, we are at Mills Realty gonna bring you the best of the best. We'll bring you folks who knows what's going on in business, what's going on in this business. We'll bring you experienced people who can tell you exactly what's happening. If you look at if you check out our videos, you'll always we always have great information and great guests. So today we have Peter again from Guarantee Rate. Peter, Peter has been in the business for a long time. And is um, is a member is work. How long have you been with uh, Guarantee Rate, Peter? How long ten years. Been? Ten years originating loans and guaranteed rate. Thirty years in the business. So as you can see, uh, Peter have a wealth of information when it comes to the loan industry. Uh, Peter is one of my partners when it comes to uh, to doing loans. We uh, we do work together, and uh, when I say work together, we um, Peter does a lot of the qualifications. So the folks who we work with in order to kind of get them loan because he is very good at what he does. And when he says he's going to get you something, he's going to get you something. So True. Peter, thanks for joining us again. Um, Thank you. A little about what's been happening in the, in the, in the industry since you've been um, doing this, this, this COVID-19 uh, pandemic. What's been happening with you on your end? How have, well, how has well been, guaranteed rate. We have, Go ahead. Well, with my company guaranteed rate mortgage, We've got 6,000 employees all working from home, which is a pretty big accomplishment in seven weeks. Uh, we're originating loans at outrageously great numbers, volume. Uh, we're still adhering to all the guidelines. Some of the guidelines are a little bit more stricter, but we're still doing a, a business and, and programs, whether it's FHA, uh, 203k renovation loans, conventional 5% down loans, we are still doing. Um, some of these programs might require a different credit score, but for the most part, they're pretty, uh, pretty liberal, we'll say. Um, yeah, we're, we're, we're very steady, very strong, the company as a whole. I mean, to accomplish 6,000 employees to move and work from home is pretty darn good in seven weeks and originate the volume that we're doing. Um, during the process of a lot of our loans, I do have to say that we are required, some of the requirements that have changed is we get paycheck stubs continuously throughout the process. Um, we will verify employment all the way up to the day of closing. So since a lot of companies have employees also working from home, it's kind of hard to get everybody in check. So that's kind of one of the slower processes of the loan application. Um, but you know, we'll get there. We get there. We close. I'm, I'm still doing a lot of volume, residential refinances and or purchases. Um, we're, we're, we're lending. We're strong. You know, it's, it's funny you, you say, um, if it, I talked to um, a couple of people, well, I talked to another lender, and they were out of FHA products. What, why is that? Well, some of the lenders may not want to take a risk on some of the less than perfect credit files. And, and as a company, as a whole guaranteed rate has taken the position um, to require maybe a little bit more money in the transaction or what we call in the industry reserves, money left over after the loan has closed. Some of our credit score requirements for an FHA loan have been increased. So your typical 580 credit score requirement has now been bumped up to 620. And in some cases, depending on a two flat, three flat, or four flat, it might be as much as 640. So that's probably why some and some other lenders may want a higher credit score just because they just don't want a risky loan in today's environment right now. I'm assuming that because of the COVID pandemic, this whole well, COVID, yeah, the COVID pandemic has definitely put impacted people's employment. Uh, a lot of people are getting cut back by anywhere from 10% of their income to as much as 50%. And some people are going on a complete furlough or getting laid off. So it's definitely trying times right now. But for the people that are working, um, gatefully employed, they're, they're, they're getting a good interest rate climate. They're getting the benefit of a good interest rate climate. So uh, I'm happy for them. You know what, you know, and, and, and back to FHA, you know, it was um, another thing I had ran into, uh, and I'm thinking I ran into this about uh, uh, three weeks ago, in that, um, you know, one of, one of the property I had for sale that was going through a 203K program, 
and they closed mm -hmm. down. They actually closed down a two or three K program and we were supposed to close three weeks ago. And that had to be changed because uh, the lenders say, no, no more, no more two or three K program. So I'm glad, so you, you guys um, uh, are still doing that. Yeah, guaranteed rate is still doing that, yes. Is, is, it, is it because of the size of guaranteed rate or, you know, because you guys- Well, have... I, I got to say that's probably because of the size of guaranteed rate, being one of the largest mortgage bankers in the United States and all 50 states were licensed. I think that carries a lot of weight with not only Fannie and Freddie Mac, but also Ginnie Mae, which is an FHA in the buyer of loans. So, um, so, so I just want to be, uh, we're, we're, we're here to make loans. Good. So, so I just want to come back to the fact that the fact that, um, which we, which I think people have to understand that we, we, some of your, the scores have changed, correct? All right. I want, I want, to, I want to reiterate that because that's important. So, whereas you could have done maybe a 585, 90 score, that's maybe now 620. So if your scores are some, somewhere in that area, you have to kind of, for, for FHA, you got to make that change and you got to kind of bump that score up a little bit in order to get FHA now. It's not just, it's not just um, the 585, 90, but it's 620 now. So Correct. it's very important. Correct. On a single family, it could be 620, certain amount of ratios. And if the ratios exceed those ratios, we might require a 640 score. There's a whole matrix that I will have to adhere to. And, you know, we could talk to the client and see if, how will they fit in to the FHA loan. But we are doing loans. We are definitely doing loans. Now, the process, though, is a little bit slower, I imagine. I, I mean, of course, because everyone's at home, where you guys still do not, can you still get through to 30 days uh, closing? Or you got to be at 45 to 60 days? No, 30 days is definitely acceptable. It's doable. Yes. Oh, that's amazing because most, most most lenders are telling us due to this due to this uh, situation they're pushing back their loans, not pushing back so much. Well, they might be not able to handle the volume that's currently on board with us or with the banks, but I guarantee rate right, we seem to be closing our loans in a thirty day fashion. Some of the renovation loans they may take forty five days, a little bit longer because there's requirement of a contractor approval, might have to inspect the building differently. So yeah, we might have to have an FHA inspector out there. So that may incur some additional time, but on a regular transaction, FHA, 30 days is definitely feasible. Three and a half percent down with a very good interest rate. So Peter, what, what do you see the trends are for rates these days? I mean, is it basically stable at three, three and a half, or you, you see it going down? I mean, is there, is there any forecast? Or have you guys been forecast to say, you know, we may have better rates, we may not have better rates. What are you seeing? Well, as far as rates go, I feel that where they're at right now and the low threes are very attractive. I think that they may not stick around forever, of course. And once the gates start to open up and people are back at work, yeah, I expect rates might start to intend upward. But for now, they seem to be holding steady in that arena, anywhere from, say, three and a quarter to three and a half percent. But, and they've been that way for the last three weeks. So, you know, rates move just like the market moves. Okay, so you're looking at three, three and a half. Is that basically a single family home, two flat? Most Sing, that's on a single family home. Single family home. Yes. Uh, the rates are different on two flat and jumbo? Yeah, oh yeah, definitely a different variance on the interest rate when it comes to two flats, three flats, four flats. And and then world of jumbo money, yes. It's oh. uh, and jumbo, just, just so folks know, jumbo starts at, at how much? Uh when it comes to the amount. I mean five hundred thousand, six hundred thousand. Five hundred anything over five hundred and ten thousand four hundred dollars is considered what we call in the industry a jumbo loan, or some people call it non conforming. Yes, there are certain requirements for that. that that's not like a conversation, a simple one over, over 20 minutes right now. <laughs> right. So I want to ask you, Peter, how are you, how are you handling your clients when they want to get pre -qual? How are you handling them when it comes to um, meeting with them, uh, getting the documents and how, how does that work? So, you know, because somehow well, for my, with guaranteed rate, we have a secure site so the customer can download everything. So really I don't have to, technically meet the person like I normally would, he or she can do 
the application over the phone. We'll type it all into the computer. We'll send them an email on a secure site. They download the information. I review it, make sure it meets the guidelines. And then we start to process the loan. So it's, it's, our company is very technology driven and I'm, and I'm proud to be working here because they have so much advancements yeah. is there, is in that there, arena. So I, this last month I closed a dozen loans and, and I didn't meet anybody. So it was all email, email and phone and secure emails. So, so you so Peter, you're doing, you're doing, you're doing things differently when it comes to, um, uh, to um, you're doing things differently when it comes to your loans. You're, 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 you're not meeting folks anymore like you used to. You're basically doing everything. Yes. That was, yeah. Most, I meet, I don't meet people too much anymore. Most of the time we're just doing everything on the phone, using the email, the secure site. Um, it seems to be working very well. Definitely working very well. I'll oh, still, you, go out and, I still go out and do drive by viewings of properties if there's going to be maybe something known up front that it might be a hiccup on the appraisal so i'd like to take a look at the property sometimes so i'll do a drive-by um on that some of our appraisers are allowed to just do drive-by appraisals now so that kind of helps speed the thought. process sometimes they do what they call in the industry desktop appraisal which means they get all the information not only from the listing broker, the internet, previous listing on the house, whatever they can online. So, and then they just do a drive-by on photos. So, you know, interesting. There, there seems to be some very positive from the appraisal part of the transaction. I, I wanted to find out when when do they when do you guys recommend a drive-by appraisal? When do you, when, well, you, that, that, that you that's that? Yeah, it's, it's hard for me to tell because then every files differently has a different footprint. Maybe the appraisal reporting processes department might say only requires an a drive by appraisal or it might say that it requires an interior photo. So it's on a case by case. Okay. Okay, so, so it's not, it's it's not hard for me. I, I can't tell you that up front. No. Okay, so not a general drive-by. It's just like, but is on, there, a, on a case by case. The case by case means, so what would one of those cases be for drive-by? Because that's that's sort of important. What would one of those? Well, be I happen to have an, Yeah, I happen to have an FHA loan in Skokie right now on a townhouse, and when we uh, ordered the appraisal, the appraisal desk here at my company, Guaranteed Rate, just said we'll we'll, we'll allow a drive-by appraisal. So that happened to be really helpful and expedite the process. No, would that be because uh, I've, I've, I've done, I've, I've done appraisals on, on drive-by appraisals when I know that the down payment's pretty good, 20% down or more. Sometimes okay. it's just straight drive-by. But going back to that FHA appraisal, uh, that was a townhome and probably we were able to decipher that of recent sales in the neighborhood, they're all pretty much in this arena is what I'm assuming. And that's why they only require the drive-by appraisal. So, so, but however, and you said uh, twenty percent down. Of, yeah, they would do a drive-by. Would they do a drive-by on the three and a half percent down or regular FHA? They, well, they, in this case, we are doing a drive-by on an FHA three and a half percent down. Yes. Wow, that's that's pretty good. I mean, that's very. They're, good. they're not at least they're not discriminating. Uh, you know, if it's a da with the down payment, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, every, every deal I have every on that arena, right? on that arena, every deal is different. And, and that, I don't have an answer, direct answer for that. Sometimes it just comes out and says drive by appraisal. I'm like, okay, great. So, so, but do you find yourself busier now? I mean, rates are so low right now. Do you find yourself busier now than? I'm in the, I'm busy. Uh, there's people buying homes. Uh, there's people refinancing, there's people calling for forbearance, which basically is allowing them to not make their mortgage payment for anywhere from three to six months. So I'm dealing with that. Um, there's a whole myriad of issues on, prop, on borrowers that I'm trying to deal with to help people along. Um, so yeah, I'm busy. 
So how, how, you, how are you guys handling uh, your forbearance? I mean, for uh, if people want to do a refi, but they're in for, forbearance, you guys allow that? And by the way, um, you explain what forbearance is so, you know, or, or, or listeners know what that is and how are you guys handling that? If, or are you guys doing that if they are, let's say they want to refi and they're in forbearance, would you do that? Or does it oh, in, in, in the case of a forbearance, that's when somebody can't make a mortgage payment and they call the servicer of the loan and ask them if they could not make a mortgage payment maybe for three to six months until they get back on their feet. That's what a forbearance is. And that servicer of the loan may acknowledge and allow that to happen and they just put the interest that's owed on the back end of the loan, which basically means if you had a $100,000 loan, the mortgage payment was a thousand bucks and you went into forbearance and say you went into forbearance for three months, that means you missed three payments. That would be three thousand dollars. You'd owe that servicer one hundred and three thousand instead of your hundred. Some of the lenders are saying, at the end of the third month, we want our three thousand dollars, and then start making payments. So, yeah, you know, it's up to the servicer. It's hard to really tell you right from wrong. We'll say on that, we will not refinance if somebody's in a forbearance. So I always try to recommend to the client to please try to find a way to make the payment because it may impact their credit score even though there's conversation that it wouldn't be reported it's a possibility it might fall through the cracks so if you can't make the payment um, i recommend that you make the payment a quick question are are, are they um, during this particular time are they not supposed to report that to the credit bureau or that's sort of a uh, correct they're not supposed to report to the credit bureau but there's probably millions of people potentially asking for forbearance and i don't know how the credit reporting agencies could keep up with the demand Everybody, yeah so so something may fall through the cracks so and it could be the unlucky one or two that you and i know and that would have an impact on his or her credit score. No, is, 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 is that like a federal thing or just that it's sort of a courtesy things from the courtesy? It is, a, it is a courtesy federal thing, but at the end of the day, there's so many potential borrowers that are looking to do the forbearance. It could have, it just can overload the system. Totally not be able, to, we're not prepared for it. That's why you, earlier in our conversation, some of the lenders have raised their credit scores because they couldn't handle Maybe the volume that was coming in, um, a, a lot of people went into refinance and that bogged down the system. So there's a, there's a, a variety of reasons that I'd yeah. always be concerned about going into forbearance. But you guys are doing a lot of, you guys are doing a lot of, a lot of refi now, correct? Correct. Because rates are at 3.25 are very, very attractive. And if you know you got a four percent rate, that it's definitely worth considering looking at refinancing. So you would you would advise, of course, if anyone anyone want to buy right now, now is a great time to pick up to pick up like cheap money, correct? I think it's a great time to buy, especially with and, and we've had um, you know in um, and in our um, in our um, in our industry. We find there's a lot of people looking right now. There's a lot of people looking to purchase property. A lot of people looking to. I mean, we have we have gotten a list of people that just really want to buy right now, and 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 buying homes, buying condos, and so you know, here too we've been pretty busy. We've been pretty busy at um at at moving homes, and and right now the inventory is is, is low. I think I, I you know I mentioned that in another one of my video. Sure. Right now the inventory is is low right now. So, um, well, and, and let me just say in that, in the world of 250 to 350, that's a sweet spot in my business. And there is definitely limited selection or inventory, very inventory. limited. So limited, and, that, limited. Uh, and that goes fast. So if it's in that arena, there's a lot of people looking correct. So those, a good property will go very go soon quickly, yeah. in, in a week, if not sooner, if it's in that price range, it's clean, it's ready to, you know, move in, we'll say. Yeah, that's a very sweet spot in the industry right now in the metropolitan area of Chicago. For this COVID-19, the, uh, the lender has not implemented anything new, correct? They just changes, they've, they've just changed their guidelines, really, but there's no 
new program that we can say this is because of this or is there any new requirements other than other than the credit score that creditors that, that uh, lenders are, are you know have have been doing like I, I was looking for anything specific that's changed other than maybe credit score and yeah is there anything that you can tell us that, that they have done or any new programs or stuff like that that they've implemented well at, at this time we're as a company all of our loans are being sold in what we call the secondary market uh, people have heard of Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac so we adhere to all their guidelines no no new programs have come out during the COVID-19 epidemic right now with respect to helping maybe with a down payment a lot of those programs are kind of sitting on the sideline right now um, so, so down payment system, is, is the down payment assistance still available? Is the IDA still available? It's, it, it is available, but there are a lot of restrictions to it, credit scores, reserve requirements. So it's not as easy as it might have been pre-COVID, we'll say. So but has, uh, has I, scores gone, for has scores gone up for that? For the, for the, I mean, the IDA was always 640. Has that changed? Yes, it's it's in most cases I'm going to be around six sixty. Really, for the idea. Correct. Is is there any other programs out there that that you can tell me that 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 we can say yeah you know um, this is still a pro this is still a grant is there any other, any other grant program that's probably what I'm asking any other grant program that you could say well yeah you know, we have another grant program that's available. Well, there's the city of Chicago that will help the consumer and. That's that's a program that is available. And what, uh, uh, by the way, by the way, what what is the city of Chicago on? Um, what are those grants? It's called a mortgage credit certificate. Correct. Uh, okay. It's a pretty detailed conversation, but it, it may help a first-time home buyer. And that's Some I think that was like five thousand. Well, it gives the consumer a, up to two thousand dollars a year uh, in a tax write-off when he or she as their income tax return. That's the simplest explanation without getting into a lengthy detail. And that's the city of Chicago grant program. Correct. No, no and they would have to, they would have to, to get through it, to get that program, they have to, no, that's only for city of Chicago, correct? They have to buy in the city, correct. In the city. And, and that program, you'd have, they'd have to go through you or you would kind of guide them through the- I would help guide them through the program, correct. And through the program. And, and where to go and all that kind of good stuff so that they can actually get that $2,000. Correct. Now, can you get that $2,000 along with the IDA program? Can that, can that co-sign like so? seven thousand five for the well, IDA? Not, at, not at this juncture, no. So you can only get one or the other. So as well, you have to just go get the IDA if, if it's available. Because you right. have $7,500. Well, that 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 program's on suspension right now. So, Ida, who, which one, Ida? The Ida program, right? It's With on suspension. Yeah, there's some seventy-five hundred dollar money that was free. Well, well, it's a grant, and you didn't have to pay it back. Those are, those are, yeah, those are on suspension until further notice. Correct. So right so, now, the there's the what's called the mortgage credit certificate, and that's not that's a pretty good idea to consider doing as a first time home buyer because it gives that consumer up to $2,000 in a tax credit every year when they report to the IRS. Okay, hold on. Money. hold on, you said every year, as in like for the next five years, the next 10 years? The life, for the life of the loan. As the long life as of the loan, so that's- As long like, as they live in the home. No kidding. Yes. So you're looking at about 60,000 thousand credits? Well, that's the math, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I've never, I haven't done one where somebody stayed in a home for 30 years though. So I, I right. <laughs> but if no, they, no, no, that does, is, that, that is does that correct. single family and two flat or is that what? I'm sorry? Is that, is that just single family home or is that two flat home? Single family, single family home, condominium. Oh, condominium. So you get $2,000 credit every year for the next, until you, until you, until you uh, move. Correct. Wow. Okay, you know what? It's, it's a good deal. It's a good deal. That's a great deal. That's a great deal. I, I mean, that's a great deal. I mean, that, if you can't get the seven thousand five hundred five hundred now, if you buy a condo, why not do this two thousand dollar credit? And and that, of course, you would guide those folks through that, also. You would yes. guide them 
Yeah, we we will help them out with that. Correct. Wow, you know, uh, you know that you know at the end of our discussion, that's a great, great uh, thing to to advocate. Because for some reason, um, I knew that there was a credit, but I didn't realize it was uh, a long as long as you live in there that they would be able to give you that credit. I didn't realize it. So I want to I want to thank you, Peter, for bringing that up because a lot sure. of people know that, and and that's why you know I tell folks we bring the best of the best to. Um, to, uh, to the Mills Realty um, YouTube page because we are, we're gonna tell you stuff that you don't know, the stuff that I don't know, that I don't know, that I'm learning from all the experts that are around me. So Peter, if they wanna get a hold of you, how can people get a hold of you? I would call me at 312-415-0884. That's my cell phone, I answer the phone. <laughs> all right, good. Uh, Peter, I wanna thank you for, for checking in with Mills Realty. This is our Leroy at Mills Realty. Again, you Thank can, you. Uh, we'll get, like I said, we'll bring you the best of the best. You can log on to our YouTube page. Please like us, um, like our Facebook, share it, uh, get a notification. And uh, we'll always bring you people that we know will, will do what, what we need to do, uh, what they need to do to bring you great information. Peter, thanks for showing up again. Leroy at Mills Realty. You can visit, visit us at millsreal.com. And, you know, we have all kinds of program going on at Mills Realty. We're also, we're, we're also hiring folks at Mills Realty, so call us, like us, share our video, and, and, as, and as partners with, uh, with, um, with Guarantee Rate, we want to say we thank Peter for showing up. And Peter, what's your number again? 312-415-0884. Again, thank, thank you guys for showing up. Please share the video, like us on Facebook and on YouTube. Thanks, and we'll talk to you soon. Look forward to the next video. Bye-bye.